captain with South Metro Fire, and I'm currently stationed at Station 39 down in Castle Pines. And my name is Jeff Hulley. I'm a firefighter out of 39's A shift. It's one of the houses that we run our wildland team out of, and our wildland team is a special operations team uh, comprising of uh, roughly 90 members of our department that are set up and qualified through the NWCG that um, allows our members to be deployed nationwide to incidents. The advantage of this is that we get to go out and get experience in some very large wildland incidents across the country, anywhere from California all the way down to Florida and anywhere in between. A lot of our district, we have a ton of wildland urban interface and it's a big target hazard for us. And so we, we like to utilize our team to go out and uh, collect that knowledge and bring that back to our, our citizens that we protect. Brush Engine 39 um, is a type three. Uh, different engines are qualified inside of the IQS system um, as, as varying degrees. Uh, these are done by tank level, uh, engine size, capabilities, pump capabilities, quantity of hose, and specific type of tools that they have on the engine. Our brush engine is absolutely beautiful. Uh, it's somewhat new to us, uh, built specifically for us and engineered to the exact capabilities that we wanted it to be built on. It has a luxurious cab uh, with various uh, adapters inside of it that we can use on, on our deployment. Um, we have taken this on several deployments to California, Oregon, basically all over the United States fighting wildland fires. We also have air tanks. Um, <clears throat> these air bottles are used to go inside of structure fires should the need arise. You can see our wildland tools as well as additional tools on top of the rig uh, for various wildland needs. We also have multiple tools and adapters that are specifically used in the wildland fighting arena as opposed to the structural arena. Wildland tools like the Pulaski, like the Rhino, and like the Combi tool. These are specific wildland tools that are used uh, only in the wildland interface. So we can use this on a deployment specifically as a brush engine, or we can use it more in the wildland urban interface as like a structural, uh, structural protection engine. Inside of this ammo can, is various kinds of adapters and fittings. We lock out and tag it out so that we don't have to check its inventory every single week, knowing that it's a sealed compartment that has been inspected. If we open it, you can see various kinds of adapters and fittings. This has all kinds of adapters that fit from national pipe to national hose, national hose to national standard hose, and everything else that fits specifically in the wildland arena that isn't typically inside of the structural environment. The ammo can keeps it safe and dry, and we know it's uh, tagged out in an easy, easy to move container. We do the same thing for all of our nozzles. We do the same thing inside for all of our flagging tape. Various kinds of flagging can help us identify a dangerous tree, right? Areas specifically where we should not walk, areas specifically tagged for an escape route, should we need to flee um, or tactically withdraw from an environment back to a safety zone, we can flag exactly the route that we need to take so that we can do that in, inside of an uh, immediately dangerous to life and health environment. Inside of this compartment, we have our chainsaw, which is immensely valuable in the wildland uh, firefighting environment. We also have a Mark III pump, my personal favorite. This is a high pressure pump that can pump extremely high pressures and volume of fluid up uh, varying degrees of incline. And this is immensely valuable, especially outside of, um, outside of our immediate area, California. Some parts of Montana are immensely steep, the mountains of Colorado, uh, in which our normal pumps, even on our engine, our large pumps can't pump that quantity of fluid up that amount of elevation 
or amount of that great of distance in which we're overcoming a significant amount of friction loss. Various kinds of fuel, various kinds of oils keep our parts running and operating smoothly and well. And shafts keep us safe when we're operating a chainsaw. This custom made Pounder Pulaski is a phenomenal tool and accomplishes a lot of what we ask it to do. Our pump panel uh, can be operated from exterior as well as in the cab. We can turn on the pump, flow tank to pump, and uh, charge many of our discharges, bumper turrets, um, or turret gun to anything that we need it to do. From here, we can actually do everything manually that we need to do. This, this pump is equipped with foam. So we can run class A foam through the booster reel or through any of our discharges. Our 200 feet, inch and a half crosslay, equipped with a wildland nozzle. 100 feet of hard booster line gets us to our objective or protects the immediate area initially around our truck. Our ladder rack gets us to the top so that we can access further tools and equipment as needed. Built-in gear racks for us have each person having an extensive amount of space on both sides of the vehicle. so that each person basically has one entire compartment from inside the cab that they can store their personal belongings, gear and equipment. Our top compartments also have, house quick deployment packs, front range equipment packs that show progressive hose lays that can go from the truck and be built for several hundred feet, ultimately several hundred miles, however much we need to do in order to attack fire rapidly while still progressing the hose. We also have hard, section, hard suction. We also have uh, equipment bags up here and stuff to support our portable pumps. We have several other hose compartments as well as um, multiple waters, MREs, Gatorade, water, fusees that can light controlled burns in an effort to get ahead of the fire or extinguish large fires keep them well contained within a large box. Meals ready to eat, packaged from the US military, right? That can give you a good chicken pesto pasta meal uh, in a time of need when you're out on the wildland uh, urban interface and you can't get to a meal for a large extended period. A top water fill and a top foam fill, uh, as well as various kinds of fuel and extra foam to take us with us to take with us on our deployments uh, to several other states, so that we know we have exactly what we need to be operational. On the back of the truck, we have our hard suction hose for drafting out of either lakes, streams or porta ponds from like a tender. Um, so we have enough to uh, draft approximately uh, 20 feet off of a static or dynamic water source. Also in this truck, since it's a type three, um, and we, we have a main fire pump that's capable of flowing uh, 1,250 gallons per minute of water, we can technically fight a house fire if we needed to. So this truck's full, um, full four-wheel drive with locking differentials. So we can also use it in snowstorms. So we do carry a, um, a partial complement 
of firefighting tools. So we have like pike poles on here um, and we'll show you our ladder complement here in just a minute as well. In this compartment, we have spare uh, wildland PPE kits, which contain a helmet, a wildland shelter, web gear, uh, eye protection, and headlamps. Uh, that way, if somebody's working on the truck that isn't part of the wildland team and doesn't have their own PPE, or they have it on the other engine that runs out of this house, we have an extra set of PPE for them as we move around trucks. In this compartment, uh, this is where we carry our additional drinking water and cooler so we can have some cold water while working on the, the fire line. And then uh, this compartment has the remainder of our, our ladder complement. So we have a 20, 28 foot extension ladder. Tucked in here we have a fence uh, puller, like a fence post puller if we need to move barbed wire fence. And then there's also an attic ladder tucked up in that compartment. And then we have our full hydrant hookup, um, our equipment to hook up to a hydrant and use that either as a fill source for our truck or if we're going to, on the, on the rare occasion that we would fight a structure fire uh, with this truck, we can hook up directly to a hydrant and uh, fill our tank just like we would on any other pump. Back here we have a direct tank fill that does not go through our pump. Um, so we can't draft off of this but we can fill our tank. So if we're filling our tank from like a tender that has um, the ability to pump to us, uh, we can go ahead and hook this up. The advantage is, is we fill our tank a lot faster to get back onto um, a mobile uh, fire attack on a, on a wildland incident. Uh, in addition, we have our uh, two and a half inch discharge that we can hook up uh, our, our regular structure fire line to, as well as an inch and a half discharge that we can either hook up our inch and three quarter line to, or we can use our inch and a half wildland hose for uh, structure protection. There's two posts that are buried, but we can get them out. As we go from house to house, if we're in a structure protection environment and we're just flaking our hose over the back so we can quickly move to the next house without having to repack and put them away as we normally would. Our right side compartments house more progressive packs that we can use to quickly extinguish and build line around a fire. Anchor, flank, and pinch. We have additional web gear and uh, packs that we can put on our backs filled with water. Uh, inside of these packs we can take the water if it's difficult access to our uh, difficulty to access place we can carry the water in on our backs if we need to extinguish a small amount of fire we also have additional hose that we can use to build additional line inside of this compartment we have various other tools we use for firefighting we carry several other shovels Pulaski mini McLeod an additional rhino a full-size McLeod a condi tool, a TNT tool for structural firefighting, and a halligan used for structural firefighting. Various other air bottles inside of these compartments round out this truck, as well as additional intakes. The cross lay that we already examined on the other side, on the other side as well as uh, non-capture pulleys that can be used to deploy the hose reel from either side of the truck with a hose reel we rewind. Inside of these compartments we keep our air packs that are deployable with us to other uh, states across our country. We bring our own equipment so we know how to operate off of our own equipment and we stay operational even in route. We carry drip torches with us that we can use uh, turn around and build and it builds a torch that is portable that we can carry around fire with us drop fire on the ground and burn in a controlled manner and either burn up to the fire hoping to extinguish it or burn out an area in order to create a fire break so that when the fire runs to that area it has no more fuel left to burn 
Our shelf compartment keeps several other wildland uh, firefighting tools as well as structural tools. We have another ammo can to keep towels uh, dry as well as toe straps, uh, some road flares to keep us safe or other, several other people if we arrive on scene of a motor vehicle accident, uh, paper towels, toolboxes, things to clean up um, what we inevitably break. Our cab has additional air packs inside of it for us to take with us on deployment. Uh, structural firefighting uh, lights that can also be used in the wildland urban interface. Uh, we carry vests in order to better house our radios. Having multiple times to, to carry several radios so that we can communicate with both structural departments and wildland uh, agencies. From inside the cab, uh, Jeff was talking about being able to operate our pump and we can operate our what we call our auxiliary pump. Everything in this red panel controls the auxiliary pump um, and it is a separate diesel pump that allows us to have uh, pump and roll capability so we can drive and pump water at the same time. Um, as well, we're fully equipped with both VHF, UHF radios and then we have our normal 800 radio as well as an MDC um, in our cab for navigating to and from calls. And then we have all of our normal controls for lights and scene lights. Foam tank and our water level. Um, so we can monitor our water level and our foam tank as we're driving. On our front bumper, we have several different lines that are easily quick deployable lines that we can hook up uh, directly to the truck are either directly already hooked up or that we can take as one piece if we need to take and deploy the line to a, a separate location. They have various size nozzles and various sizes of hose for various uh, objectives of whatever we need to go to and extinguish the fire in a rapid manner. This truck is also equipped with several spray bars which spray water directly in front of the tires keeping the area directly in front of us cool and is able to lay down a flat line of water that we can drive and extinguish as we drive. All right, so on our um, standard like team, our wildland team line gear, um, what we have is uh, a very important piece of PPE. This is our uh, fire shelter for deployment. All of our team members carry it in a standard uh, place, which is at the bottom of our, uh, our line gear. And we carry that with us anytime that we are outside of the truck on a wildland incident. Uh, from there, in our packs, everybody's packs are set up a little bit different, but we have a label that um, identifies where our tourniquet is kept, and every member is assigned a, uh, a tourniquet that they carry with them, as well as um, quick clot uh, combat gauze uh, in the event that we get injured via like a falling tree or a chainsaw um, or an incident like that. As well, we all get issued uh, a headlamp. Um, for operating in the dark um, and a bandana uh, to help us with smoke. And then every team member also receives an IRPG or an incident response pocket guide, which gives us uh, multiple pieces of information as far as structure triage, uh, laces, lookout situations, watch out situations, uh, size up reports, uh, indicators that are uh, something that maybe we don't use every day, um, but they get used on the federal incidents quite a bit as far as a full formal size up. Um, and then anytime we're out on the wildland, we always use laces, which is lookout communication, escape routes and safety zones. Uh, but it gives us good reminders on what we need to set that up um, as we operate throughout the incident. Extra pair of gloves, which is always a good thing to have. Um, in addition, uh, on our kits, uh, you'll notice that uh, all, of our, all of our members carry uh, fusees uh, in the event that we have to burn out a deployment zone. Um, so we have an, an ability without a drip torch to start a fire and burn an area that would be uh, safe for us to deploy our shelter. Uh, we carry flagging tape to identify hazards or concerns that we come across. 
Uh, some of us uh, carry, uh, this is my GPS, just to uh, help us map and identify uh, where areas of concern on, are on the fire line. Uh, additionally, uh, carry extra water bottles that can be filled up and uh, packed in with us. Um, so we carry water there. Uh, as well, a lot of members carry a camelback uh, in this portion of the pack or some type of hydration reservoir. In our main compartment, this is where we carry a lot of our personal gear. Um, so extra like jackets, sweatshirts. Uh, this is um, just a bag of uh, necessities, food, extra batteries, that kind of stuff. Extra hearing protection. We spend a lot of time hiking, so we, most of us carry some kind of foot care kit uh, to take care of any blisters or concerns. Um, rope. We also, all of us are issued uh, a hot shield system, which allows us to have, afforded some respiratory protection between the filter and this insulation for our face and our airway as we're working on a fire line. sunscreen because we work in Colorado and everybody has sunscreen. This way roughly depends on who packs and how much stuff they have and how long we're going to be out in the in the backcountry for but anywhere between 30 and uh, 45 pounds. So annually every member of uh, the wildland team has to do what we call the arduous pack test um, and or work capacity test and what that is is a three mile hike in under 45 minutes with a 45 pound pack. Um, so we either um, load up our packs to, to meet that weight or we put on weight vests at 45 pounds and we do that hike uh, every year um, to ensure that we're capable of getting in and out of the, the fire ground.